Hello everybody, my name is Ashley Marcinkus. I'm going to be a senior next year majoring in elementary education. On campus, I'm involved in Camp Kesem as well as the Office of Student Life, which allows me to make these fantastic videos for you. So today's video is about housing, which is very important. It's important to know where you're gonna live and how it's all gonna work out. Um, so I'm gonna go through a few things that I need to cover, and then you guys can feel free to ask any questions you have. Um, start putting them in the chat so when I'm done covering all my fun details, I can start answering those. Those questions can be about housing, can still be about orientation, registration, picking classes, or just Augustana in general. So it's up to you. I'm ready to answer your questions. So first, let's move on to what we need to cover, housing stuff. So the first thing is your housing application is due June 30th, which is coming up very soon. That's next week for crying out loud. So make sure you get that finished as quick as possible. Um, while you're doing that, make sure that you're you're doing it yourself. Your parents or a friend isn't filling the, it out for you. Um, those questions are really personal and they're going to get to know your um, personality and then match you up with the right fit, your right roommate. So um, while you're doing that, make sure that you don't lie. You are extremely honest. Um, even if some questions refer to if you smoke or if you drink, it's not a way for the college to get you in trouble. It's just so that you are matched with an appropriate roommate. So if you didn't smoke or drink, but you said yes for some reason, then the person you're living with might. Or vice versa, if you don't smoke or drink, then the person you're matched with may be very uncomfortable with it. Or like if you do and you say you don't, the person you live with may be uncomfortable and that could create some divide. So make sure you're very honest and like, again, I said before, there's no reason that it's going to get you in trouble or anything. It's just to make sure that you have the best experience with your roommate. So um, if you don't have a roommate yet, that's A-OK. -okay. Most people um, pick random roommates. That's what I did. Um, so the survey will match you up with your perfect fit, and then you'll have a grand old time um, living together. You could have one roommate or two, depending on what residence hall you're living in. If you already know who you want to room with, that's great too. You can create your roommate group um, after you sign or like send in the application, then you can fill out that grouping and it will show you, tell you how to do that. Okay, moving on, what else? Da, da, da. Okay, medical accommodations. They're real, we get it. You have allergies, you have other needs. Um, you can submit your diagnosis and letter from your doctor online. Just search accommodation on the website and um, make sure you do have a letter from your doctor or the residential life office will not be able to help you. They need the official medical information that you do need that assistance or that accommodation. Um, and then, very exciting, there is an open house on August 17th. So you and your roommate can plan to come meet each other, um, see your room, take dimensions, um, all that fun jazz, see how far it is from your classes to your room or vice versa. Um, that's a great way to meet your roommate and get a little more comfortable with where you're going to be living. Um, and then if you're wondering when you're going to get your housing um, information, it'll be mid-July. So no sooner. So be patient. Um, my best advice is just don't really think about it and it'll be there before you know it. And it's almost, it's halfway between, halfway, geez Louise, it's halfway um, through June already. So before you know it, it'll be July and you'll have your roommate and it'll be great. So those are all the things I have to cover. Um, are there any questions? Let's see. Okay, so every room, that's a good question. Every room is provided with a few things. So you get a bed frame and you can either have that lofted um, down on the floor, in the middle, your choice. Um, it comes with a mattress, a desk, and a dresser and a chair. So that's what your room will have. Um, you're gonna need to bring sheets. You're gonna bring pillow, blankets. Um, if you want a futon, that's great. Um, towels, all that fun jazz. But your room will be coming with um, a bed, a mattress, a chair, a desk, and a dresser. Oh, and a bookshelf. Bonus. Um, for some residence halls, the bookshelf is separate, while others, it's like combined as a little display thing on your desk. So it just depends. Okay. Um, because I didn't have a single dorm, I don't know if you're notified sooner, but I'm sure it will just be packed in with the bundle of mid-July. Um, so I wouldn't hope any earlier, but if it does come earlier, just be surprised and happy. Um, but I would just bank on mid-July. Oh, see, there you go. Chris Byer gotcha. 
Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna keep going with just some other general information about housing. Um, so if you're an international student, you will be coming um, to school early. So the people like the international student office will help you get that rooming stuff. Um, but if you are a local student or a student from the United States, you'll have to bring all that stuff or go shopping with your parents or guardians um, before you come. So it just depends. But I'm um, almost 100% sure that the international students um, go shopping with the international student office. Okay. So AC, yes, that is definitely a thing. So there's only one residence hall of the three for first years that has AC. That's Westland, the biggest one. The other two, Seminary and Andrean, do not. I lived in Seminary myself, and we survived. The windows open, you can get fans, um, light covers on your bed. It's all good. It's nothing that you can't handle. Um, and it gets relatively cool relatively quick. Um, the nights are cooler, so don't worry about that. Okay, hanging pictures on the walls. I use the command strips. I like the double Velcro kind. Um, so you stick it on the wall, Velcro, Velcro, stick it to the picture. Um, you can also use hooks. I would not recommend tape of any sort. It doesn't stay, especially on like the painted walls. It just slips off. Sticky tack, depending on the, um, the weight of the picture, would work too. So it just depends. But command hooks are great. Walmart, there's um, some at the Dollar General that's just by Aldi down the road from Augustana. They have some. They're everywhere. They're great. Um, okay, so bathrooms. Um, depending on the hall, again, it's a little different for each one. So for seminary, we had um, two bathrooms on the girls' floor. And I want to say there are probably 40 to 50-ish people um, on our floor. So that's probably around 20 to 25 people per bathroom. But just remember, you're not all going to be there at the exact same time. You'll ebb and flow. Um, I think there are less people per bathroom in Westie. Um, but I could be completely wrong. I think there's just one bathroom on each floor for Westie. So there's three for each wing. Andrine is a little different. It just depends. Some of the um, hallways are longer, so they have two, um, but some are shorter and they have one. So it just depends. But like I said, you're not all going to be in the bathroom at the same time. So you'll come and go. You'll find your routine. Yeah, you'll see some people and chat and say hi, but not all 25 or 20 people are going to be in the bathroom at the same time. That would be a little crazy. Um, like one. Okay, so for floors and like different genders, most of the time each floor is a certain gender. So like all guys, all girls. Um, I do know that Andreen, my year, had one floor that was both, but I don't think they're doing that anymore. Usually it's girl, guy, girl, or guy, girl, girl guy. Um, just depending on how many girls and how many guys depends on how many floors you have of each gender, which makes sense. Um, okay. So dimensions of the beds. I always went like the extra long, um, twin. That was my go-to just so you had some extra room. You could tuck it in a little tighter if you needed to. Um, but that always worked for me. And then small appliances, my freshman and sophomore year dorm, I had a mini fridge, I had um, a microwave and then like a ninja small blender thing um, and some fans. That was pretty much our appliances. Oh, we had a TV, but I don't know if you count that as a, an appliance, but we had that. Um, mm -mm. So um, the dimensions of a tickle room, because Fire just sent in a link. So if you click that, you can find your literal room when you have it. And you can see like the weird nooks and crannies. You can see the dimensions, um, see where it is compared to the bathroom and your hallway. So that is a great tool. Um, I think the single rooms are a little smaller, but it's not like you're in a closet. You have plenty of room for your bed, your dresser, chair, um, and desk. And then I think you have a small little alcove for a closet. I'm pretty sure. I didn't live in a single room, so I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that's all that is included. So it's definitely comfortable. It's cozy, but comfortable. Um, so yeah, that's dimension wise. Okay, so your door. I'm going to talk about if you're walking up to your building, there are multiple security points that they call them. It's fancy. Um, so you have your lovely ID that you took at orientation. 
and you scan the thingy, it lets you into the front door. You walk up, then you find the wing. So if you're in seminary, there's one or two doors, it goes to the same places. You scan again. If you're in Westerland, you find which wing you want to go in. If you're in Dream, you find which way to go. Um, and you'll figure that out. You find another scanner. And then you're into the main um, halls or floors. At that point, you have a key um, that opens your specific door. So um, you go to your door, you unlock it, you're good. And then each door has a way to stay unlocked um, when you're in there and moving in and out. Or you can lock it when you're in there too. Um, if you get locked out, it happens. It's all good. You'll call your CA, a wonderful person, your community advisor or CA. So um, a CA lives on every floor. There's at least one on every floor. Um, I've been known like in seminary, we had two um, and some Westie floors have two, but the majority there's one. It just depends. Um, and so they can unlock it for you. If your CA is not in the building, then you can call the number that they give you um, for like the CA on call, which is usually later at night. Or if it's like in the morning and you just shower and you're in your towel and you need it, then you call public safety um, and they will come unlock your door. The first time it's free. And then the next time you do it, it's $5. The following time it's 10, 15, 20, all the way up to however many times you unlock or get yourself locked out. Um, so if yeah, if you get locked out, you'll follow that procedure. So try to find your CA, CA on um, on call or public safety. And they're super nice. They'll be there within a few minutes. Unlock your door for you. They'll ask for your ID number um, to so they know that you're in the right room. And then you're all good to go. Okay. And that's happened to me multiple times. Um, last year, or actually sophomore year, two years ago, that's crazy. Um, my roommate locked me out the first day that we were living together. So that was a good start, but it happens. I called my CA. It all, it all worked out. No worries. Okay. Sweet. Awesome. Um, keep asking your questions. I'm going to start talking about some more general um, residential stuff, but please keep asking questions. I love answering them and it makes your life easier. And I'm here to make this um, wonderful transition into college as easy as possible. So please ask any questions and it doesn't just have to be about housing. Okay. So we talked about CAs a little bit. So like I said, there'll be a CA on each floor, um, and then there's a live-in full-time or part-time employee in each hall. So like an adult adult that lives in the hall or is there most of the time. Um, they have like their own room. It's like they're living in the high or the college dorm with you. Um, so they are a resource as well. So if you're ever having any having any problems in general about like school, you're nervous, um, stressed out, anything like that, or you have some roommate issues, then um, you can talk to your CA first. They're the first line of defense. They're trained for any and all situations. They're there to help you. They are your friends. Um, so talk to them, get to know them. Yeah, bond with them. Um, and then if there's something more serious, then they'll um, point you towards the professional or the um, the like live in full time or part time person that lives in that hall, or they may direct you to the residence, um, residential life office in general, just depending on the situation. So that's kind of the like employee employees of residential life. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So residence halls have sort of their own activities. So. Um, the CA each term has like a floor bonding activity. So it just depends on what your CA wants to do. Um, when I lived in STEM, one of my CAs did like a pie in the face thing in the spring. We also did, um, we like went to see a movie or sometimes they go to on-campus events together or you eat pizza together and have like a movie night or you have a game night, something like that. So every term or every semester. Sorry, still adjusting to semesters. Um, every semester you'll have a bonding activity. Um, and then I'm pretty sure you also will have like a meet and greet the first night you stay in the residential. So you'll see everyone on your floor. You'll meet your CA more officially. Um, they'll go over some expectations. And then you can always do some bonding or like team building stuff then or just like ask for everyone's numbers or make a group chat, whatever you want. So that's kind of like the activities for each hall. Okay. So for summer housing, um, the breaks are online. So if you want to look at those dates, you can have more official time coverage and you understand um, when all those things happen, when finals happen, all that fun jazz. Um, 
You can stay on campus, but you won't be staying in your room. Usually they use um, like the apartments, so Swanson or the flats for people who are living on campus over the summer. Um, if you know seniors who are going to be like leasing a house or renting a house the following year, you can contact them and sublease. That's a way to stay on campus. Um, but you definitely can stay on campus if you have an on-campus job or if you find a job in the area or you're volunteering, doing research, anything like that. That is doable. Um, you do have to pay for it. I don't know exactly the price, um, but it's an option. So you can look into that if that is what you want to do. Okay. Okay, so guests. Yes, you can have guests stay over in your room. Um, when I was a freshman, you had to like sign them in or like tell your CA they were coming, but I never had a guest except my brother, and I think I just brought him up. So it just depends. Um, your CA will go over that expectation and what the rules are. Um, I'm pretty sure you can have opposite gender um, guests. I've never had a problem or heard anything wrong with that. Um, but yeah, your CA will go over that in more specifics. And once you know who it is, you can always ask him or her. Um, there's no curfew. There are um, like public safety students. I don't remember exactly what they're called, but they sit at the desk after um, the regular desk people or like the CAs leave. And they're there, um, I think like midnight on for a few hours, but there's no one telling you you have to be in a building at a certain time. I wouldn't recommend roaming the quad cities at night or staying out super duper late, but um, it's not like the doors won't let you in at past a certain time. So don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I think that answered your question. So no curfew, um, which is cool. It gives you some independence. You have to be responsible. Some other general things about housing. Um, la, 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 I've talked about that. Um, so you can find the code of conduct online and it includes what you can't bring. So in general, you can't bring anything um, that has an open flame or has exposed coils. I don't really know what that means, but just avoid exposed coils. Um, and then the pets, there's no pets except um, non-flesh eating fish. So you can't bring your piranha to school, but you can bring like a goldfish or a beta. Um, and then on the same regards of pets. If you want or have an emotional support animal, um, that's a totally separate process than the regular application for housing. So you're going to email Michelle Mason at Michelle Mason at augustana.edu and ask about the emotional support animal process. She'll walk you through it, help you through it, and it'll be great. Okay, we have another questions. Okay, so Grace asked, what things did you bring that you didn't need and or what things did you not bring that you ended up needing? It's a good question. Let me think back to freshman year. Um, I was really nervous about closet space. So because I lived in seminary, I had um, two roommates. So there were three of us in two rooms sharing one closet. Now the closet was pretty big, but we had to divide it into three. So I was really nervous about... Um, how much clothes I could bring. I didn't want to take over the closet area. Um, but I also didn't want to have nothing, but I didn't want to bring everything. So I went pretty light in the beginning. I brought like shorts and t-shirts and tank tops and stuff like that. Just summer clothes, um, a few sweatshirts, some leggings, sweatpants, um, all my shoes, just for a variety of things. Um, but I definitely could have brought more. I could have brought more long sleeves. I could have brought more sweatshirts or sweaters. The closets are a little deceiving. They look small, but they can hold plenty. Um, I also brought these awesome plastic bins that were super long. They're about like three feet um, like deep and then like about a foot high. So I put a bunch of t-shirts and stuff in there because my dresser could only hold so much stuff. Um, so that was pretty great. I really like the plastic bins. Um, what else? Fans are good. You know, if you like the sound when you're sleeping or if you're in a room without AC, that helps a lot. Um, bring some snacks. Um, some cooking utensils. That was something we didn't bring for a while. So if you're making like oatmeal or having cereal or something, you're going to need something to eat that in and with. So bring some silverware, um, bring some like cheap dishes, um, some soap and a little like soap sponge so you can clean your stuff. You know, you don't want dirty dishes all over the place. Um, bring some like rags or like kitchen towels if you're planning on eating in your room or like going to use some utensils then you don't have to use your shower towel because that just gets gross um 
what are some things I brought that I didn't need? I brought this huge 25 foot ethernet cable because my mom was convinced that like I needed to have it to plug in directly to the internet. And I tried it once. It was weird and so long. And so I threw it in the bottom of my drawer and never saw it again. So don't feel like you need an ethernet cable because you don't, <laughs> um, especially not 25 feet. <laughs> Just saying. Um, having things like command hooks or like the Velcro things I talked about, or just duct tape in general helps, you know, things rip, things break. You want to tape something up. Um, that's good to have just so you don't have to go and buy it. Or if you don't have a car, you, to find, if you don't have a car, you don't have to find someone, um, to drive you to get that stuff. Um, blankets are good. Pillows are good. Um, a shower caddy is helpful. I recommend the kind that you can hang up outside of the shower. The plastic ones get really gross when water gets collected in them, like mold and stuff forms, and that's nasty. So I would recommend one that hangs or just bringing in your soap. Um, all the resident hall bathrooms have shelves, so you can leave your shower stuff in there, which was great. So you don't have to go back and forth because you're already bringing other stuff and clothes and your towel and all that fun jazz. Um, shower shoes. Shower shoes are huge. If it's cracks, flip flops, those like mandal, sandal things, whatever it is, bring shower shoes. You never really know who's been in the shower or like what's going on with them. So you want to wear shoes just in case. Um, let's see. I think that's it for right now. If you have any other questions about bringing things specifically like clothes or anything, ask me and I'll dive in a little deeper. Okay. Okay. So move in day. Moving day is a great, fun, hectic day. It's usually like 85 degrees, which just adds a little bit of extra, you know, challenge, but excitement, um, depending on how early you get there. So I think the res halls open like eight or nine. Um, once you move in and stuff, you have till I think like 11 ish or so, or 12 until you have to be somewhere. Um, so the earlier you get there, the more time you'll have to go shopping. Um, I know my dad left and like bought a bunch of stuff while we were setting up the room. So maybe bring multiple people so you can use that as a resource if you have to go shop or get anything. But there should be plenty of time um, to do that. So, and if not, hopefully your roommate has a car and you can go shopping then. <laughs> or you can always shop like before you get to the school or anything like that. It's up to you. Okay. There are no sinks in any of the dorm rooms. Sorry, all the sinks are in the bathrooms. Um, I know some big universities have like the sink and the mirror, um, but we do not have that. So you'll have everything in the bathroom in that vicinity for those needs. Yes, there are heaters in the each dorm room. You will not be cold. Um, usually residential life decides um, to turn the heat on after like a few days of really cold weather, like throughout the whole day and the night. Um, they don't want to turn it on too early because if you turn it on, they can't turn it off till the spring. Um, so they want to make sure it's nice and cold enough to turn the heat on for this, for the winter, not the summer, the winter. Um, so yes, there are heaters. You will not be cold. You may be a little warm in the summer and the spring, but you will not be cold. I promise. Okay. Weather. I was just talking about that. So, um, the weather during September to December. That is a very big, vast weather time. So in September, it's still pretty warm. Um, it doesn't get super chilly until like late October. There will still be spike days of 75 or 80. Um, and then there'll be days of like 45, 50. So it just depends. Bring sweaters, bring layers. Um, this year, it took a really long time to get cold just because, you know, climate change, all that fun jazz. Um, <laughs> but it took um, like mid November, it got really cold and that's when I was glad the heat was on. But before then we still had warm random days. Um, and then after Thanksgiving, it kind of set in for winter. We had the huge snow and then it was cold. And then, you know, the polar vortex and all that fun jazz when it got really, really cold. Um, so it just kind of depends. Hopefully this year's weather is a little more normal, but just, um, considering how late it took to get warm during the summer, um, it may take a little longer to get colder. So just be prepared, bring layers, um, have a sweatshirt with you. And it's funny because outside it may be one temperature and in your class, it will be an exactly different temperature. So you'll get used to it. You'll figure out, you'll adapt. Don't worry. 
Okay, so laundry. Yes, you have to pay for laundry. Um, it is one twenty-five per wash, one twenty-five per um dry. Yes, that's right. So um, every load you put in the dryer, you pay one dollar and twenty-five cents, and every time you put something in the washer, you pay a dollar twenty-five cents. Fully recommend bringing a drying rack. That's something that I miss, Grace. A drying rack is awesome. Um, so then you don't have to pay for as much to dry and um, you don't shrink things in the dryer. It's perfect. And then you can fold it up. They get the collapsible ones, shove it under your bed, and it's perfect. Okay, what else? I have only used laundry pads or pods, <laughs> laundry pods, um, Leanne. I don't use the soap because it's heavy and then you have to carry that along with your laundry. And um, for some residence halls, your laundry is in the basement, some are on your floor, some are above you, below you, all that fun jazz. So the lighter the load, the better. Um, so I just have the laundry pods, stick a few in my um my basket and then throw them in the washing machine with my clothes. So yeah, laundry pods work just as well as liquid. Fully recommend the pods. I haven't had any problem with them not dissolving, so I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, some other general stuff. Please keep asking questions. I love answering them, so keep bringing them to me. I will not avoid any question. Let's see. Um, okay, so we're doing something new this year. It's a new program called Healthy Living Community. So in general, the purpose of the program is to create a community for students who are committed to living free from alcohol and drugs. So in general, all of our residence halls are um, alcohol and drug free, but we do know that some of those policies are disregarded and some people sneak in drugs and alcohol. Um, so for this healthy living community, you will um, it's optional, completely optional. So on your application, you can mark whether or not you're interested in it. What it is, is your the people who sign up and want to be a part of the healthy living community will be on a floor or in a wing, just depending on how many people there are. Um, and it will be alcohol and drug free. So it holds each other accountable. It keeps you in a healthier environment. Um, all that fun jazz. So, um, yeah, I think it would be great. It, we don't really know what building it will be in right now. It just depends on how many people sign up, how many people are interested. Um, and then they'll decide. So if you're considering that or interested, make sure you sign up. I think that would be a great option for you. Okay. Yes. So the laundry cards, they're fun. Yes. You can, um, you get a laundry card, you can buy them. I think you can buy them in the bottom of Swanson. I'm pretty sure. Um, and no, 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 residential life, the office of residential life, and they'll give you the card. You'll pay $8 and the card will automatically have $5 um, on it. So close to five washes or five dries or a combination. Um, and then you can load the card at the loading places. There's one in the Gerber center. There's one in the Westie. Um, I think that's all. There may be one in Andrine, but I had only used the Gerber or Westie ones. Um, or you can do it online and the website is on the back of the card. So like whenever I needed laundry stuff, my mom would like put money on the internet and then you just go to the machine and type in the code that the um, website gives you and then it loads the money onto your card. So pretty sweet. Um, so all of the laundry machines in the residential halls are with the card. And then when you get older and you move out and you have like a TLA house, then you pay with coins. But we don't have to worry about that right now. Okay. So um, I've known a few students that have had asthma um, and needed to be in a room with, with AC. I know some people who it didn't really bug them. So it just depends on the individual. Um, talk to your doctor about your needs. And if they find that you need to be in an AC room, um, have them write the letter and then you can submit it through the accommodations um, part on the website. Okay. So Rachel, I don't know if you've been to orientation registration yet, but um, you want to bring your transcript with AP credits um, with you so then they can put you in the right classes and make sure that they have all of those credits, um, 
in your like progress report um, through Arches, which is like our big hub of um, a bunch of things you do for school. But um, the registrar will like take those credits and make sure you have them all. Um, it depends credit hour wise. So if you get like a four or five, you could um, like have to, or like avoid classes. So it could take over for um, 100 level perspective classes. Um, it just depends on if the AP class relates to an Augie class. So there's some um, AP courses and tests that don't um, connect right to um, an Augie course. So then sometimes advisors can move it around or like prove that it covers certain requirements for those courses. But other times you just have the credit, like the Augie credit. So if you haven't been to orientation and registration, make sure you have those AP um, scores and um, credits with you. So then you can show the advisor and they can help you figure out all of the credits and such. Um, you could also bring a transcript from your um, school, which you probably already had to send Augustina, and it will probably be in there already. Okay. So Chris Meyer Beyer just um, put some information about the accommodations for you, um, but I'm sure you could still live with them. Like it's it's okay if you don't need the AC specifically, but your roommate does. And if you're a roommate group, then they'll automatically pair you. So you're like a little party of two <laughs> that are um, hanging out together. Um, so you'll most likely have it. Okay. So Leanne asked if I recommend renting the fridge um, or purchasing like the microwave and fridge. So I had... I forget where we got a microwave and fridge. I think one of my roommates had them. Um, like their brother had had it and then they passed it down. Um, garage sales are great. Like the Facebook um, groups, if you find like a used fridge or used microwave. Um, I don't know if I would rent it just because it's expensive and then you have to rent it again for the following year. So I would just buy it. You can always um, sell it to friends or um, younger students, older students, if you don't want it further down in your college career. Um, but talk with your roommate and maybe split the cost or you buy the microwave, she buys the refrigerator. Um, it just depends on like your um, your preference and what you find the most comfortable money-wise and all that fun jazz. But there are ways to find um, used resources that aren't going to be super expensive, um, like purchasing a brand new one. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so that was very random. But um, so the question was if I use Google Docs or Microsoft Word to write papers. Personally, for me, I use Microsoft Word to write papers, but for group projects, um, so like group papers, or um, for me, I'm an elementary education major, so I write a lot of lesson plans. Um, but at times we do it in groups. So, like, we would use a Google Doc just so we could all work on it at the same time. And we don't always have to be in the same place at the same time if we're working in a group. Um, so I like Microsoft Word for my personal, um, papers just because it's easier to edit, um, for formatting and other things that some professors are picking on. And I just like having it on my laptop. So then wherever I go, whatever I'm doing, I can access it rather than needing the, um, the Wi-Fi. So that's just me, but it's up to you. Both are used. I know a lot of people tend to use Google Docs just because it's easier. It's with you wherever you go. Any computer, you can log on, print it out, stuff like that. So it just depends. Um, are you obligated to share the fridge? That is up to you and your roommate. Um, I don't know if you would be able to have two fridges in your room just because it's a lot of electricity and a lot of power for two people. Um, but you'll have to work it out. I mean, I had two other roommates, so there were three of us, and we shared a mini fridge all year, and we had no conflict. So it's doable. You can definitely share. You're capable of it, I am sure. Um, but if there's some reason you don't, then you'll have to talk with your roommate and work that out on your own. So, um, yes, fridges are heavy and bulky. That's why I get the miniature kind. Um, <laughs> but fortunately, when you're moving in, in there will be so many volunteers helping you move stuff up. It will probably only take one trip. Surprising, I know, but it's true. 
you will pull up to um, the entrance of your residence hall and there'll be people in bright shirts and they'll ask what room you're going to and they just start taking your stuff upstairs um, or to your wing. So moving in, you don't really have to worry about heavy lifting or like a lot of bulk and stuff. Um, moving out will be a little more frustrating. People aren't going to help you move out. But I mean, if you only have to move it once that's and going down and out rather than up any stairs, I think that is worth the purchase or the rent. If you do rent fridges and microwaves through um, the company that Augustana uses, I think it's called Bedloft, then those appliances will already be in your room and you leave them there when you leave. So um, you don't have to worry about carrying it. So that is one bonus of renting it. Okay. I do not know about ACEs specifically um, for like international driver's license. Um, you will have to ask them. There is a job fair during Welcome Week, and ACEs is there, so you can go up and ask them. Um, but if not, don't worry. There are plenty of other jobs on campus, um, and you'll find one that fits your needs and that you enjoy. So if ACEs isn't in the cards, get it, ACE cards, um, then it's okay. There are plenty of other opportunities to work. Okay, printing. So in each residence hall, there is like a little computer lab. I mean little. It's maybe two computers and a printer. Um, and yes, there are printers, but they don't do fantastic. I would not um, bank having it working all the time. Um, yeah, I would recommend sending it to the library, um, printing it in the library, printing it in Olin, printing it in Old Main, Evolved. Anywhere that has a big computer lab will be much more accountable than um, printing in your residence halls. And um, they're much more well stocked with paper, ink, all the fun jazz. Um, the residence hall printers don't get checked on as often, so they usually are out of paper, which can be very frustrating. Um, so I would recommend going to a bigger academic building. There's this awesome thing called paper cut. It's called um, Augustana um, dot printing. I think, I think it's like Augustana dot printing dot edu, something like that. Um, but you can print from your computer, your laptop to any of the buildings. So when I lived in Erickson and I had to hustle over to Evald, which is like the opposite side of campus, I would um, send my papers and assignments to um, Olin. And then I'd pick them up on the way and then go. So it will just be sitting there on the printer. So you can send it from one floor to a different floor in the library. You can send it um, to Old Main. You can send it to Olin. Wherever you are, that is an awesome feature. And a lot of people don't know about it. So augustana.printing.edu, something like that. You'll find it. Paper cut um, is awesome. Fully recommend using that. Um, yes, it costs money to print. But every year you get $50 of your tuition allotted to printing. So it's really not that bad. Um, I think every colored page is like 25 cents. And then every black and white page is 10 cents. I may be really wrong, but it's somewhere around there. Um, so it takes a lot of printing to get to your $50. Um, also, there's a the printing room. That's not what it's called. One second. It will come to me. Um, the copy center, <laughs> printing room copy center. Um, there's a copy center that when you're doing presentations or big or like making a poster for your senior inquiry, which seems like forever, but it will be here before you know it. Um, or you're going to a conference or you're doing a symposium day or anything. You can print really big posters, like the big wall posters um, for those presentations at the copy center. And um, those posters are anything like printing postcards or anything like that, any kind of printing um, that like a Walgreens would do. They can do that and they'll take the money out of your printing account rather than you paying um, to like go to a office max or something to print a poster. So that's awesome too. Um, the copy center has an email, so you would just send them your PDF and they'd print it out within like the day, which is sweet. Um, I don't know if it rolls over your printing money. I don't think it does. It's similar to Viking Bucks where it goes for you throughout the whole year, but once you're done with the year, it kind of goes back into your into the Augustana Vast, like money. Um, so it just disappears and then you go to $50 again. It does not roll over. That would be nice though. Okay. Back to some general things. Keep asking questions, please. You guys are doing great. Um, we'll be on here for a few more minutes.
Okay. So some people may wonder if they can choose the hall they live in. Unfortunately, you can't, but that takes a lot of pressure off of you. Um, you can leave it to the professionals, um, and then you can wait till mid-July to get your roommate and your room assignment. Very exciting. Um, but no, you cannot choose your hall. Um, but that's okay. So your meal plan. As a freshman, you have a few more options than like older people because you're going to be in the CSL a lot more. Um, so I think there's a 12 per week, a 15 per week, and all you can eat. I think those are the main first year plans. Um, maybe there's a 10 meal per week. But um, your meal plan rolls over if you sp pick a specific kind. So like for juniors and seniors, there's the any 90 or like any 75, which rolls over, but the per week ones for like 10, 12, or 15 or all you can eat does not roll over. So I did the 15 meals per week. Um, so by the end of the week, it would reset to 15 and I wouldn't have like 18 if I had three left over, if that makes sense. Um, what my roommates and I would do is we had a little whiteboard and we'd mark down all the meals we had eaten. Um, the 15 gets you two meals a day and then breakfast some, um, or like during the weekend I may go more often or I'd get like a brew meal, which is like, I could get like a muffin or a bagel for a meal swipe, stuff like that. You'll figure it out. Um, let's see. Yeah. So yeah, it, Rolls over only if you're using the any 90s or 75s, but I don't recommend that for freshman year. You're going to be eating there almost every meal because you don't have a kitchen yourself. Um, so I would stick with the 10, 12, 15, or the all-you-can-eat meals. And if you have more questions about that, I answer that more meal stuff in one of the videos before. So feel free to watch those um, just to review general information and hear any questions that you may be thinking of but just forgot to ask or anything like that. Um, so in general, like I said before, but just so you know, again, um, if you have a conflict with your roommate, your first line of defense is your CA, and then they will help you through the situation. Just wanted to put that out there. You're not alone. Um, it may feel weird that you're living with a stranger, um, but just remember that they're as nervous as you are. Um, they want to have the best experience. They want to have a good roommate who they can talk with if they need to, or laugh with, or just have a good living environment. Um, so just be aware of your garbage and um, your stuff and stay clean and organize and communicate. I think that's the best way to avoid any problems is just like talking it out, figuring out what works for you guys early on, um, setting boundaries, all that fun jazz. So it's really exciting to have roommates. It's one of those things that you see in movies and TV shows, um, but it's really cool once you're doing it and it'll be awesome. Okay. So um, if you want to cook yourselves, in the Westy and Andrine buildings, there are like little kitchenettes things. So there's like an oven and a stove and a sink and a fridge. But not many people do that just because it takes a lot of time and money to buy all the food and to cook it. And um, you can't really keep it down there. So you have to like track your food from your room to the area, clean it up. It's just, it takes a lot of effort, especially when you're required to have a meal plan. Might as well use that meal plan. Um, when I was a freshman, we had like dinosaur nuggets um, or like some fruit or vegetables. I made like protein shakes and stuff in my room. But other than that, or like some cookies, other than that, I wasn't making full blown meals just because I didn't have the place to do it, the time, and I already had the meal plan. So it just wasn't worth the effort. Um, for big meals or consistently cooking for myself. Yeah, so you can bring food from the CSL. Um, they have these awesome plastic containers. Um, so the first time you go to um, the CSL and you want to bring the food back either to the library or to a class or to your room, whatever you want, um, just ask for your container. And it's kind of like um, a check-in, check-out system. So you get the container and you have 10 minutes to fill it up with whatever you want um, to take. And then um, they like keep your ID as collateral. Um, and then you come back out after the 10 minutes or before. Um, you get your ID back and then you can grab the silverware and head out. Um, and then...
And when you're done and you have the dirty bin, don't you don't have to worry about cleaning it. Just the next time you go to the CSL or pass the CSL, you can turn the bin back in and they'll give you a like laminated card that says like redeemable for one um, plastic bin. <laughs> and then the next time you can just bring that card to them and they'll trade you the bin and it goes back and forth. So that's pretty sweet. And not having to clean it is pretty darn awesome too because they have weird crevices and stuff. Not as fun. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. I've done that a few times for classes that I'm running late to or if I need to meet a group um, for like a group project, but I need to eat. So I just go there and grab it. Um, or if I'm working, I grab it on the way. It's really handy. I love it. A lot of people don't remember that it exists, but it's a great thing. Great resource. Good question. Um, I kind of answered this before, Maggie, but freshmen can cook like in these little kitchenettes in the basements or like the main level. Um, but it's mostly just an oven and a stove um, and a sink. So you're not really going to be cooking full blown meals, maybe some chicken nuggets or like cookies. Um, but I wouldn't bank on cooking in general. You're not really going to want to because you have to clean up after yourselves. You already have the meal plan for the CSL. So it's not really worth it to cook full meals and you don't really have all the utensils and you have to clean it all. It's just, it's a big mess. So wait till your junior and senior year to cook on a consistent basis. Um, to loft your bed, I don't remember how expensive it was. I want to say it was around a hundred dollars, but I could be really wrong. I don't think it was any more than like 150, but no less than 50. It's a little pricey for the, like the CAs coming in to put the bed up, but that's what it is. They do it correctly. They make sure it's still safe. Um, so yeah. And you go through the bed loft company and just like sign up for Augustana and then you say your room and when you're moving in and what you want and all that fun jazz. Okay. So yeah, I don't know exactly how the res halls assign um, students to specific halls. Um, but if there are like medical accommodations, usually they're, they're put into Westie just because it has the AC. Um, it's a newer building, more controlled type situation. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how they choose either Seminary or Andreen um, or Westerlin. It just kind of depends on their own um, system. So just trust the process. You'll hear that a lot. Okay. Okay. If you want to be a CA, that's awesome. Um, you don't have to worry about that till the end of the your freshman year. Then a lot of emails come out and applications come out saying like, do you want to be a CA? And you're like, yeah. So you fill out the application. You do an interview with the residential life um, staff, and then they either hire you or not. You will not be a CA until you are a sophomore, just because it would be weird if you are a freshman doing CA stuff. It wouldn't make much sense. But, yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you're interested in that. But you're going to have to wait a little bit. So just hold on to that. So that will be cool. Do, do, do. So resident halls in general. In Westerlin, you have um, two lobbies. So there's one with like the kitchenette thingy and then a couch and like a chair. And then there's like the big um, Westie lounge, which they call it. I never lived in Westie. So this is just like secondhand knowledge. Um, <laughs> so in the Westie lounge, there's um, tables and booths and like high tables and chairs and sofas and stuff for studying. Um, I know a lot of people used to study in there. It gets a little loud, but um, that was a big place for people to hang out and to do homework. Um, and then across the hall from the lounge is um, the Westy Gym. So that has like a, a dance floor with a mirror and like mats. And then it has cardio stuff and weightlifting stuff um, and all that fun jazz. So that's kind of like Westerland. And then, of course, like the three wings with the rooms, you know. Um, and it has the C store. So um, that has like the little market, like um, gas station type thing with brew meals um, and snacks and ice cream and frozen pizza and drinks and whatever you can imagine. There's some like medicine, some like first aid stuff. There's anything you can imagine in the C store. So that's in Westerland as well. Moving on to Andrine, they have a lounge area with a piano um, and some couches and chairs and some tables. And then in the basement, they have a pool table, some TVs and a couch or so. Um, and then their kitchen is in the basement. 
And then good old seminary has the sem loft, which is like on the third plus floor. So it's like this little attic place, but it's, it's kind of cute, kind of dusty. Um, but it has some like old couches and a TV in there. Um, and then seminary has the admissions office on the base floor. So there aren't a lot of lounge type places in SEM. So a lot of people just lounged in the hallways. But that's kind of the rundown um, for what each hall has. Um, you can be in the res hall lounges as late as you want to be. Um, there are quiet hours. So on the daily, it's like midnight on that it's a quiet hour, something like that. Maybe it's 10, 10 p.m. to like 6 p.m., something like that, um, that a quiet hour, which doesn't mean you have to be silent. It just, you have to be aware that some people are asleep. Um, so you don't want to be like running up and down the halls or jamming your music or whatever, because the CA will come and chat with you. Um, but that's like quiet hours. And then during finals week, you have like 24 hour quiet hours. So you just need to be aware that people are studying or sleeping, all that fun jazz. Um, but there's no time that you can't be in the lounges. So if you need to be up till four in the morning working on a paper, that's open to you. It's like your house. So just treat it like a living room or a dining room, but respect it. Um, in sophomore year, I was in the lounge a lot because I lived in Erickson. There were times where I would be out there till like three in the morning working on stuff um, just because I procrastinated, not because I had so much stuff to do. Um, but yeah, so it's open to you. Just know that it gets a little loud when a lot of people are coming in and out or you just have to be quiet when you need to be quiet. Good question. Okie dokie. Well, if there are not any other questions, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you miss anything at all, it will be here forever. So you can come back and watch it. Um, watch my lovely face and talk about housing. Um, if you haven't watched the other ones, um, please go back and watch those. There are general questions. So feel free to um, peruse those. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to follow this link that Chris Byer just put in. Awesome. Bye guys.